I'm Will Hedrick. And I'm Jordan Schaffer. And this is Dog Ears and Timestamps, a book club podcast. And this book is getting scandalous, dude. Scandalous. Yeah. Like that show. Have you seen scandal. that show, Scandalous? No, I haven't. <laughs> I think it's just Scandal, but yeah, no. <laughs> I never I never saw any episodes of that. It didn't interest me in the slightest, oh. to be perfectly honest. Wow. The lady on it looked like she was very, very pretty. And I know nothing else about her. Yeah, that's it. That's it <laughs> I don't know her name as an actress. I don't know other things she's been in. And I don't know even that show. So. Well, uh, well dude, tell me about uh, your week and your reading and when you found time to read. What did you do this week? I read some, I think, like Thursday night or something like that, just trying mm-hmm. to get ahead of it. I read probably about half of it, and then I didn't read the other half until last night. Nice. I was up until like maybe two or three reading. can't remember exactly. Aside from that, nothing really special happened. Mm-hmm. It's just a championship weekend for the NFL. And that's, oh, nice. that's really it. And everything nice. else is just the same as ever. Nice. But yeah, nothing special, I guess. Yeah. What well, is, what was um, yours all about? Yeah, dude, same thing. I didn't do much. Um, I did have something special happen, though. It was uh, my grandma's 90th birthday on Saturday, so I got to go to her birthday party, which is cool. That's cool. But I didn't I didn't really do any reading until today. I mean, it was just, I knew it was going to be a bit of a short section, and um, at least short for the audio. It, I, I listened to it a couple times a day, and uh, it was only about like 45 minutes to an hour of listening. And it was, uh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't too bad. And it was, it was all like one character, so it's kind of easy to follow. It was, mm-hmm. uh, it's just Arthur. Um, yeah. And it was, uh, so it's cool. I just got a lot of Arthur today and then like a lot of, uh, comedy. My headphones broke like halfway through the week and they're like weren't charging. So I was worried. Like I went through a headphone, like, <laughs> yeah. not like a headphone <laughs> scare, but you know, these are nice headphones. And, uh, my brother gave them to me and, um, and they've been working really, really well for a while. And I was just like super disappointed when I thought that they weren't charging anymore. Could have just been like, honestly, I think it might have just been like your wax or something. Like, just like you just yeah. need to like clean them every time I use them or something so they can make a good connection. Right. On yeah. their uh, charging pad. That's how mine are too. I yeah. try to make sure that they have like a clean connection. Yeah. I donated to the Alzheimer's Association for her birthday, and then she got like some cute cards, and she got some gambling money because she's going gambling next weekend. I think. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, she always goes gambling for her birthday. Yeah, what else did I do this weekend? I think that was it. I went. Yeah, it was just cool being home. Uh, everything at home, like you know how everything used to have carpet. There's no carpet anywhere at the house. Oh anymore. yeah, it's all it's all hardwood floor and tile. Oh nice, but so it looks really awesome. Cool. Yeah, and then mom got new marble on like the countertops over there, so like everything is not really all that different you know everything's still in the same spot but uh it's just like up- updated you know yeah and uh it's cool it looks really good so that That's was cool, cool going over and seeing that and just like all right this is like this looks good mom nice right yeah just kind of came back late on uh on sunday yeah dude that's basically it i mean i listened to it a few times a day i mean i think we both said it neither of us took notes it was, was kind of easy to follow yeah but it's uh, not a whole lot that happens yeah we uh jump back in time from where we were with George, yeah, several years. I mean, there's a whole lot that's an indeterminate, indeterminate span of time. It's not like they they very infrequently gives us give us hard dates well, throughout this book. Yeah, I mean, we assume that. I mean, it must jump back at least like 13 years because it shows us when Arthur first meets Jean. And he yeah. and her for 13 years before, you know, two Yeah, years. but we don't know exactly, um, like, when that is. No, that's, At least it okay, doesn't, that's yeah, that's, yeah. That's it doesn't important. tell us, and that was, oh, sorry. it doesn't tell us, and that was in 1903 or anything like that. It's yeah. just, like, because it, it, it's, um, I, I, what I assume it does is it jumps back to where we last were with him. Yeah. But, yeah, so he meets Gene, Gene Leckie. Mm-hmm. He meets Gene Leckie at some party, some rich person party that he's at. <laughs> and is kind of like astounded by her because she's like different or whatever. Yeah, she's the uh not exactly what he expects out of a woman at that yeah, time. Yeah, like forward and mm-hmm. like bold and like he's uh he's just like oh my goodness, this this woman is just <laughs> right. <laughs> she she's hit so into me. Also, his wife has freaking, as we last left her, we left her with the... She's got the consumption. The consumption, yeah. I ended up, like, Googling it. I should have Googled it again, but I'm pretty sure it's, like, lymphoma, something like that. 
Yeah, it is something like that. But yeah, the um, so she's like dying and she's bedridden and doesn't really get to do or can do anything, but just hang out at the house. And so he is sort of like becoming lonely because she's not really like a wife so much as a dependent that he cares for yeah, in a lot of ways. So he's kind of like... Yeah, all the all the passion's kind of gone. So he sort of like falls out of love with her. and But then he meets Jean and sort of falls in love with her because she's, you know, so different or sort of like he just becomes really taken with her and uh, evidently falls in love like immediately. That's what they really, when they talk to each other about it, that's how they act. Yeah, he makes it sound like they're, like, really in love. It's not just, like, uh, a lustful thing, you know, because there is, like, a bit of an age difference, but um, it's not like she's dead to him because he's Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and uh, he wasn't even a sir back then when they met. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's not like she was into him because of his fame or his fortune or whatever. She was, like, into him, into him. Dude, were you, uh, like, when they when they were first, like, going out and you knew something was going to happen and then, like, they kind of went for the kiss and then um, they used the terminology cock stand? Is that weird for you? I, it was I, it was a phrase that I hadn't heard before, but I was pretty sure I knew what it was. <laughs> yeah, no, I knew what it was. <laughs> I just had never heard that. And, every, and, I've, and I listened to it a bunch today and I kept hearing that and they kept saying it and I was like, ugh. It just doesn't sound good in that guy's voice, I guess. <laughs> but, it was kind uh, of a weird phrase. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a weird but, moment, I guess, too. But uh, Yeah. They sort of, like, more and more impatiently. So, for to begin with, they start, like, just meeting every now and then in secret just to, like, hang out. Yeah. They don't really talk. I think they kiss a little bit. Yeah, they establish the rules, then, like, we're allowed to kiss and, yeah, then, like, hold he, hands. And... Like, they're not going to have sex because... <laughs> He's still married to Tui, to Louisa, Mm -hmm. and uh, can't dishonor her in that way. But then she's, uh, Jean also has like, you know, her reputation to uphold or whatever it is. You know, the sort of like old ideas of honor and chivalry that he's so obsessed with throughout his whole life. So he's like, we can't have sex. We can kiss a little bit and we can meet and talk and be in love, but that's it. (laughs) And so that's like all they do. Um, yeah. But then he slowly starts integrating her into life in different ways. Where his like, like social circles, his like he introduces her to the ma'am and who's that? Is that his mom? Yeah. I feel like that's his mom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a very British thing. Yeah. Um, and it's like the rest of his family. He meets her family, and she even meets Louise's mother. And there's like everybody's kind of in on it, knowing that. You know, Arthur is lonely and Louisa is going to die, is gonna die at yeah. some point, you know, in the near future. I hate to say and it. And everybody too, just... sort of accepts it or doesn't even, you know, mind or anything like that. Specifically, his mother um, accepts it like immediately and then internally thinks about how she did the same thing when his father was, you know, taken to hospital or whatever um, yeah. with Waller, the doctor that moved in that arthur didn't like and that she's still doing now as we find out later on in the chapter she's still living on the estate there and she goes to the house every now and then to have dinner with him or he goes to visit her at her Uh cottage even though he's now married to somebody she's still like totally his mistress and it's just like whatever it's just a, a totally acceptable thing dang yeah i never heard that Hmm. that's cool it's part of her own sort of like inner dialogue a couple of times that yeah. we very briefly get and then arthur also thinks about it sometimes because he starts taking the, the his mom's cottage at waller's estate becomes one of the meeting spots that he and gene go to hang out yeah, i think at. i get that I, yeah i heard that and so they spend more than one like dinner with waller and his mother there at the house mm. and, and he's just reflecting back on you know he's married and evidently my mom is his mistress. I have this woman that I haven't made my mistress, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, we're, yeah. we're in love even though I'm married and, you know, we kiss. Yeah. Um, we kiss. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like almost lame, right? Yeah. Um, 
and so he, he like has is lame. this sort of like internal conflict of like is does every marriage have secrets like this is this a commonplace thing because it's so against his like you know childhood idealized ide- version of yeah, you know what it is to be and... a man and you know mm-hmm. in a committed relationship and things like that yeah but then he's also like like anybody that's doing something wrong that they know to be wrong or at least are mildly conflicted about whether or not it's about being right or wrong. He is always trying to, he's trying to justify it the entire time. Yeah. He gets in a big fight with Connie, his oldest sister, um, who married the other author that we mm-hmm. talked about in the previous episode. Yeah, yeah, that he approved of. Yeah. They, he like, they catch him and uh, Gene in public, like, kissing? sort of, not kissing, but... They're like walking with arms linked or whatever, Ooh. and they and Connie and her and like husband that, sort oh, of like Arthur. sort of like Connie looks away as they walk past, and her husband <laughs> just like sort of eyes Arthur like, "What are you doing, dude?" And so then later on, Arthur goes to meet with Connie at her house and explains everything to her like, "This is you know how everything is. This is how I feel about Jean, and you know Louisa can't." you know, be a wife anymore. She's going to die, blah, blah, this sort of thing. And so at first Connie is like, yeah, okay. I mean, I get it. You know, we're, we're all good. And then her husband also says like, you know, just as much, but then like a couple of days later, they call him over again and they're like, no, now we're like really thinking about it. And y'all need to be careful about what y'all are doing. If y'all are acting like that in public, you're going to one dishonor Tui and you're going to end up dishonoring Jean as well. And Arthur gets all fucking bent out of shape about that. He's like, I won't be told what to do by the likes of you and blah, blah, blah. By the likes of you. (laughs) He has like all this like internal conflict constantly going back and forth, knowing that, you know, it's not totally above board. Yeah. But he does believe in it at the same time. Yeah. And it's, it's, there's some like interesting thought experiment as about like relationships and humanity throughout this section. Yeah, so he ends up just kind of biding his time, right? Like waiting it out until his yeah. Wife they dies agree and... that that's what's going to have to happen, and they so we never see like her order. internal conflict, but yeah. she seems to be like, no, it's this is fine. This is you know more or less great. I'm just happy to be in love with you, and we'll wait. Yeah. Whereas because he's the character we're following, we saw his internal conflict, and he's just constantly like, oh my god, this is so frustrating. But we do see more of Arthur's frustration and then obviously his moral quandary that he's sort of in. And I mean, it kind of touches on what he thinks she believes because he's like, oh, she's so forward. He, he, She almost wants me to make her my mistress, you know, like it almost seems like she kind of wants to be that, but maybe not. Well, eventually he uh, gets knighted. Yeah. Um, well, he, he goes to this, makes him. <laughs> yeah, he goes to South Africa. Yeah, to war, for the right? war. Yeah, for the South African war. Mm-hmm. As a doctor, he volunteers. Uh, feels like it's some sort of duty for him to go. Yeah, he um, feels like because he's, he's kind of he's got like a lot of fame and stuff like that. He feels like he's looked up to. Yeah, by all the young men. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so he thinks that he should be a good example of that, and you know, again, yeah. obsessed with his sense of honor and duty and that sort of thing. Which is pretty cool, because he goes, he does his service, and then when he comes back, the queen of the time wants to give him the knighthood, like we just said. Well, the queen passes. Oh, no. And a new king is crowned. Oh. And uh, he happens to be, um, not like friends with him, but through like his connections and, you know, his now, you know, large English fame, he ends up in different, you know, gatherings and things like that where different people are, and he... Ends up meeting him, I think, before he gets crowned. And then, uh, so they're friends. And then whenever he becomes the king, after Arthur, you know, goes off to war, he, uh, you know, gets offered a knighthood um, okay. to, you know, for, for all of that. And he doesn't really like the idea at first. He thinks that it's sort of like, not like below him necessarily, but mm-hmm. the it's it's on a level that he doesn't aspire to. He aspires to something higher. But then his mom is like, "What the fuck, dude? Like, yeah, what, what was, was all of this for?" <laughs> yeah, if not to get your knighthood and be remembered forever in history. <laughs> right, and so he ends but, up doing it. 
And then that's really pretty much all that happens. Um, and, and then of course, you know, towards the end, Louisa dies too. He dies. And, uh, he goes into like a pretty severe depression. Yeah. Things get all awkward with, uh, Jean too. Um, yeah. she doesn't go to the funeral. She sends her condolences and then like the first time she comes to visit, he's all like super awkward and he sets like a weird, awkward tone yeah. for like the visit. He doesn't really know how to behave. Yeah. And then for, you know, for whatever reason, he's become hung up on, you know, every, like, I don't know, you know, whatever. Uh, and then he hears something from Mary, his daughter, who had heard something from uh, Tui before she died, uh, where she said something like, don't be surprised if your father remarries after I pass. Like, you know, yeah. let that be like a thing that you can be ready for and it doesn't take you by surprise. But it like strikes Arthur as like, did she know this whole time? And yeah, then he just becomes like super self-doubting yeah. and then realizes that it wouldn't be just as easy as like, you know, her passing and then after an appropriate time marrying Jean, it would be like a lie that he would have to keep up with his kids for the rest of his yeah, life like now. how did he meet her and how yeah. could he have followed her for her? So he's so just like, you know, yeah. freaking out about everything in the same way that it had been bothering them the whole time, you know? Yeah. But that's, and that's pretty much all that happens. <laughs> yeah, kind of right at the end, um, Arthur and George sort of have their first, like, contact i feel like through uh through mail yeah he he sort of like finally resolves to be like okay well i need to get my head straight i can't get anything done i'm not even getting any of my work done i can't even respond to any of the mail that's coming in so i need to just you know deal with everything and just move forward and you know i'll write myself as i move forward and that includes with Jean. He says, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm going to marry Jean and, you know, everything will fall into place, you know, as I'm taking steps. So he first goes to his office where he's been letting his uh, assistant handle everything pretty much. Yeah. And goes through a couple of letters, but then he has a letter that he reads, uh, uh, authored by George Algy. And that's where the chapter cuts for me. Yeah. I don't get anything too. additional. Yeah, it cuts for me there too, but I also wrote down in my notes to listen to the next part because, mm. uh, yeah, I forgot the exact sentence that you said, but it was like the next sentence was saying, um, oh shoot, I can't even remember, but it was it was just kind of cool because it was like Arthur and George together and it gives you kind of like a little hint about like what the next little bit's going to be about. Yeah, this being the end of chapter two, now we're in chapter three, which is a longer chapter than chapter two was. The longest chapter of the book, which I guess isn't saying much because it only really has to be longer than one chapter. Chapters <laughs> one and four are like 60 pages. This is obviously where everything happens as far as like the mystery goes. I don't know what it is. I guess the thing is, is where or why did George get released? Yeah. And if depending on what that is why he got released and what his current conditions of parole are mm -hmm. is does he is he's in need of finding out why every you know what it is that happened is he trying to exonerate himself at this point so that's why he's asking for arthur's help mm -hmm. i guess that makes or, the most sense or did he get arthur's help and that's what got him out early well, I think that it would have been really weird for them to write it like that and yeah. not tell us that yeah. George had written to Arthur about it. Yeah. Okay. That would seem like such like a constructed reveal. Yeah, maybe it is just to exonerate himself then. He just wrote to Arthur. Yeah. Or, yeah. Right now that seems to make the most sense. That's right. But then even, I mean, there's, there, there's a lot of details to be revealed in why they're now getting together, which I suppose we'll get in our next George section mm -hmm. or whenever they're talking, George will be like, I've, you know, I was in prison. I've been on parole for six months now. I'm trying yeah. to, you know, exonerate myself cause it wasn't me. And I would like for you to help me. <laughs> <laughs> the next George <laughs> yeah. section. Something like that, uh, I guess is what's going to happen. Yeah. I and mean, then we get to find out who actually has been doing all this stuff. Cause I still think that it's it, the same person that's behind all of the harassment. Okay. And then, you know, like we've talked the last couple episodes, I don't know 
if they're necessarily the same as the person that's been slaughtering the animals or mm-hmm. if they're related or whatever it is. Yeah. All that sort of stuff will start to find out. I hope that this is where it starts getting like like really exciting and there's like an actual sort of like um like Holmesian mystery about it where we get to, you know, be involved with it to some degree. Yeah, dude, something's cooking for sure because I feel like right well, I mean the section we just listened to as far as the audiobook goes that was like almost the end of chapter three. We have like five minutes left of chapter three and then an hour left of chapter four and then the whole thing is done. So mm-hmm. we're almost done as far as like the audiobook. And all that's left for the the book book is the the third chapter and then there's a fourth chapter which is as short as the first chapter. Okay. So I assume it's just wrap up stuff. Yeah. Um or like where they are now now that everything's over, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is that ends up happening afterwards. So yeah, this is where it all happens, I assume. Yeah, man. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm, ex- I'm kind of excited now, now that we have so much, like, foundation. I feel like we're going to get, like, a real good yeah. you know, final product, you know. I don't know if you want to finish the book, this next section, but... Uh, it would be a lot. You can definitely cut it in to... half or do what you got to do for the reading, because yeah, it's different. Let me look at the pages again right quick, because I, I know it's longer than chapter three. So for the book, we'll read about... 70-ish pages, and that takes us to the first Anson section. So if you remember Chief Constable Anson of uh, Great Wyerly, the town that George was in, and, uh, you know, all that everything happened in, it's a, uh, he's got a reading <laughs> section, and it's the first one of his. Okay, and we so stopped what, before we listened to it? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. So it's about 70-ish pages for Kindle. Okay, we'll cool. see, you know, where that lies for you, I suppose. Yeah. It, was, yeah, um, it seems to, it looks like there was a Georgian Arthur section and then a very long Arthur section mm-hmm. and then Anson. So okay, okay. that'll be where we stop. Then we'll, you know, see where that gets us and where we start going after that. I think that we'll probably only have, if we cut this in half and then we have an episode for the wrap up, that's uh-huh. three episodes left of this. So okay. we'll. Start thinking about what the next book will be. Yeah, you want to switch genres? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I mean, I'm pick some we hadn't done yet. Yeah, we'll have to come up with a couple of different options. Yeah, I think that'll be fun, though. Yeah. Because, yeah, we're really starting to branch out into stuff that I hadn't even considered, like a historical book or, you know, historical fiction, all kinds of, I mean, there's, I can't really think of any other types right now, but I'm sure, <laughs> that, I mean, there are a ton of other types of uh, books, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that we can come up with. Yeah, we'll definitely. figure something out. Awesome. And then we've got other ideas that we've been mulling about anyways. So yeah, definitely. Maybe maybe something there. I don't know. I don't know. Cool, yeah. I mean, you, it just uh, follow us on uh, Twitter and Instagram at ears underscore stamps. Um, dog ears and timestamps at gmail.com. Email us. Talk to us. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Especially the book. Let us know what you think of the uh, mystery, why he got out. Why he got out early? Yeah. Four years early? If anybody has any ideas. I assume that it's just a parole situation. Yeah. But we'll we'll find out, I no guess. No looking it up, though. No looking it up. <laughs> you can't go to George Adelgie's Wikipedia page. Yeah, that's cheating. Like I almost did on accident at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we will see y'all next week. Yeah. Next week will be after the Pro Bowl which is a game that does not matter at all. <laughs> Hopefully the AFC wins, I guess. And uh, we'll talk to you all ahead of the Super Bowl. All right. Where hopfully the Pats don't get fucked like the Saints got fucked this weekend by the officials. Ooh, dang. I'm Will Hedrick. And I'm Jordan Schaffer. This is Doggers and Timestamps. Man, let it out. Go dude. Pats. <laughs>